Good morning or good afternoon or good evening wherever you are in the world. Talent Finders would like to welcome entrepreneur, TV host and producer Julia Mellum. So welcome Julia. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be doing this and to be here. Thank you for the invitation, Karen. And yeah, it's right now it's morning for me, but I know it's right with the online world. You could be yes. anywhere, anytime, <laughs> you could be anywhere. anywhere in the world. Yeah. Okay. So firstly, I'd like to congratulate you on all your achievements. So can you please share with us how your entrepreneurial career as a TV host started? Oh, I would say, so I actually have a running joke when people say, how did you make it on TV? And I say that it's because I was a really bad waitress. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it started. Because <laughs> everybody always said, you know, actors or a TV, you know, if you want to make it in film and TV, most people just end up waitressing. But I did try that in college for like a month and I was really bad at it. Okay. So I was like, no, I really have to make it on TV because <laughs> like, I don't have a backup plan. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically I started uh, when I was a teenager. I was in Brazil and I was modeling. Uh, my first job ever was elite models and I was doing runway shows. And then from there, I did a lot of auditions for commercials. I did a few commercials as well. And then I booked a job on TV. And that was my first time, you know, being on camera. And so literally my first job was being on cameras. And it just became something that I became so comfortable with it that I just don't know how to do anything as well as, <laughs> as being a TV host. I just have to make it work. Amazing. Uh, so you're not only a TV host, but you're also a writer, producer, actress, um, and holistic business coach for women. So can you share with us more about this and was expanding into these other specialities an organic process for you? Sure. Yeah, so I became uh, well known for um, as a TV host for Hollywood TV in New York. I was the New York correspondent and I was working a lot on the red carpet, interviewing celebrities, um, you know, covering film festivals, film premieres. I met all these celebrities that, you know, everybody talks about, like Ryan Gosling, Bradley Cooper, George Clooney, um, all, all these directors, uh, Steven Spielberg, George Lucas. Martin Scorsese. So it was really like a dream job. Yeah. And I did that for five years straight. And it got to a point that I just realized that I didn't know why I was feeling this anxiety or I just wasn't as fulfilled as I was before. And that's yeah. when I started looking, you know, for the holistic approach. I started realizing, okay, what am I doing uh, wrong or what am I not doing that I could be doing you know to be happy because I should be happy you know and I look around it's like my life is great it looks good on the outside and I just want to feel good on the inside as well because I just look good for everybody else but I wasn't happy um, you know what I mean so I feel like a lot of the times we have a life that it's for other people or that looks good you know looks good on social media it looks good for our family it looks good for our friends but in reality I wasn't really happy and I started you know realizing that there are things that I could uh, start doing one of them was meditation so yeah. this was about five years ago and honestly I've been meditating like straight for you know the last probably like four or five years that every day I wake up, it's like brushing my teeth. I wake up, I, you know, I meditate even before I brush my teeth. I wake up, meditate, and then brush my teeth and then have breakfast. So it just became part of my morning routine. And through the meditation, I started going into other things like yoga, breathing exercises, affirmations, journaling. And I got really uh, connected with the work with uh, Abram Hicks that, yes. you know, from Ask and It Is Given. So I started um, researching a lot and listening a lot to her uh, about law of attraction and high vibrations and how to increase your vibration from the moment you wake up and how it's so important that you have to do that as like your first priority every day when you wake up. So I've been following that for, uh, yeah, probably the last two, three years. That was... The first time I actually saw Abraham live because I was working on cruise ships 
you know, mm. I started a couple of years ago and she was in Miami. She has a house or I think it's like near Miami, but it's in Florida. Um, but she has a house in Florida and she was doing a lecture, a live lecture. Remember when we could go to those? Yes. <laughs> live. <laughs> live. Like filled uh, a million years ago. <laughs> I know. There's like an audience and a stage and she was talking on stage. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it seems like a, another lifetime. Uh, yeah, so I saw her live and I got really inspired and I realized, well, I should be doing this. You know, this is really my number one priority, how I feel. I have to feel good, whatever I'm doing. And another thing that I really like that she says is that you can never have a rewarding, um, if you don't have a rewarding journey, you're not going to have a rewarding destination. No. And I've realized that this is so true, mm. you know, with like relationships, with a job, uh, with where you live, like it has to be good every single day. Otherwise it's not, it doesn't get good if it's not, if the journey isn't good, you no. know? Exactly. So that's where, what led me to holistic coaching because I realized I wasn't the only one and there were a lot of people struggling, especially women. Mm. And that's when I started with the Feed Your Soul Challenge to help out other women out there who are also dealing with, you know, burnout or struggling with, you know, just being happy on their daily lives or, you know, during the pandemic as well, isolation or anxiety or depression. And that's how I created the Feed Your Soul Challenge based on this holistic approach that you really have to see yourself as like a whole being. You can't separate, you know, career or personal life. You just, you just have to, be happy and feel good you know first and foremost yeah for sure so what would you say some of your biggest lessons have been within your career in my career yeah um i mean i'm sure there's been many but like what stands yeah. out for you what significantly stands out for you okay i would say i think i was listening to a podcast or maybe like watching someone talk about that the other day um about patience but, and then I started thinking, I actually started thinking about that, like what I could have done differently in my career. Mm. And I would say definitely patience is a big thing to just be more patient yes. with where you are. Yes. And not only patient, but I think more present. Okay. So if I could look back and tell my younger self, you know, what can you do differently? Like there isn't something that I would say, oh, you did this, like it was so wrong or, you know, nothing like that. Mm. But I would say more like, just enjoy yourself more, mm. like be more present where you are right now and enjoy yourself more. Like really like, you know, pay yourself on the back for your victories because a lot of the times that I feel like I was so, especially when I was a teenager, like, you know, really like a go-getter in a good way mm. but at the same time I feel like I wasn't like I got so many opportunities and my life was already so wonderful you know I had this as a teenager I definitely did not have like a usual you know teenager years because I was like going to these runway shows and I haven't really had a usual trajectory I guess my journey has been sort of unusual but uh, you know, I got to do a lot of things that a lot of people don't get to do and just appreciate it more. Yeah. So just be more grateful. I think that is what I would say, like, but from the very first opportunity, because I was always looking ahead, like, oh, this is great, but I want to be in a bigger show. This is great, but I want to be, you know, more famous, or this is great, but I want to get more gigs, or I want to get paid more. Yeah. And we just get stuck in this thing that there's like, wheel that you can always get more right but it all starts with appreciating where you are and what you have and just looking at look how much i've accomplished you know look how amazing this opportunity is look how great my life is you know so i think being more grateful is what i would take away it's my biggest takeaway yeah absolutely so you were born and raised in brazil was being in the entertainment industry something you always knew you wanted to do yes i always wanted to be in entertainment industry uh i always wanted to be an actress and mm -hmm. since i was literally four years old i would uh, write plays for my family 
-hmm. and we had these big family gatherings like summer vacation at my grandparents house Mm -hmm. and we would perform like the little like as little kids uh i know you're like four (laughs) yeah but like four or five i'm totally serious like as little kids i would like enlist all my cousins to perform with me (laughs) And I would wreck them. I would say, oh, okay, you know how to do this. You do that. Like dance. You, you're you going to dance. You're, I was like directing all my cousins around the family. Yeah. And you can play the piano. You do that. Because everyone has like a little talent or some, you know, some class that they were going to. And, and from even that age, like we used to perform in the living room and, you know, at the, uh, at the house, uh, we would make the, make popcorn and like sell them tickets to their own living room it was hilarious yeah, amazing. <laughs> know. Know. but that's how it all i love that my family went along with it they were like okay you want to be an actress i guess this is it you know <laughs> yeah for sure so you've worked with some of the biggest tv networks and on broadway what would you say has given you the edge over others and do you think also that speaking other languages has worked to your advantage Uh, Yeah, I definitely believe that, you know, being from Brazil, I did have a unique background and Mm -hmm. it definitely helped me in my career to get the opportunities that I did get Mm -hmm. because, you know, I speak Spanish, Portuguese and English and learning English, even like having, you know, that bilingual background because I started learning in Brazil, it definitely gave me an edge to be able to come onto the U.S because they got a scholarship to uh, go to school here. That's how I moved to the US. And then, you know, the opportunities that I got after that too, even working on cruise ships, uh, when I started working as a TV host for the cruise line, I was working with Royal Caribbean and celebrity cruises. And, you know, one of the biggest things that they had an itinerary that was the Mediterranean and they wanted someone that could speak Portuguese, Spanish, and English because we're visiting all these countries. Okay. So I was literally, you know, traveling all over the world, which was another um, dream come true because it was definitely on my bucket list that I wanted to travel the world for a year. Okay. And I ended up traveling the world for two years <laughs> on a wow. cruise ship. Mm-hmm. And I got to visit all these different countries. And definitely that's something that, you know, I visited, um, I think I was counting as over like 33 countries in the last like two years. Wow. So Amazing. definitely speaking other languages was definitely a huge plus. And if I didn't speak English, I wouldn't be where I am now. And, and that is another funny story too, because I remember when I was about 10 years old, that goes to show that, if, you know, the decisions that you make when you're a kid or a teenager, they really like can take you to different paths in your life because I remember asking you know my mom like please take me out from English classes I'll do anything but just take me out of English classes I'll never use it and (laughs) she was like no you're gonna keep going to English classes you're definitely gonna use it trust me one day you're gonna thank me for sure. and, uh, Amazing. And, uh, definitely you know I stand corrected because I definitely you know I thank her for that because thankfully I stayed in English classes and I'm here now so I, none of this would have been possible if I didn't speak other languages absolutely so you've worked and covered many red carpet events and premieres so can you share with us what that experience was like Oh, yeah, it's kind of surreal to be really honest with you. Yeah. Um, like being on the red carpet, it's such a surreal moment because, you know, what you see when, once the interview is done and, and ready to go, all edited and everything, is not the whole experience, you know, of what is happening um, when we're on the red carpet because sometimes we're there for, I don't know, three, four hours and you get, you know, like a five minute or 15 minute interview or like a good 15 minutes, you know, but it's like anything that you're filming, like, of course, like you film for a lot longer or you wait a lot longer. But I think the difference is that on the red carpet, you're not filming the whole time. There's a lot of waiting that goes on. Yeah. So a lot of the times we're waiting for people to come around. And, and then when that moment is on, when you get your five minutes, it's literally like those 15 minutes of fame or five minutes of fame, mm. uh, you really have to be on like 100%. So I think I learned how to be really focused, like tunnel vision, you know, immediately, like as soon as I need it. 
because sometimes I'll be waiting for an hour and then they're like, okay, George Clooney is ready, you know, talk to him. And, and I'm like, oh, hi, uh, okay. And then you have to like be 100% ready and yes. there and present and ask all the questions you can and get a great interview in those five minutes, you know, and there is no take two. No. Because, yeah, it's like a lot, you know, that's another thing that I don't know if everybody knows this, but it doesn't work that way that you, you do a, a interview and then you're like, hey, uh, George, can you just come back and can I ask that again, you know? Yeah, that doesn't like exist. you get one shot at it. Yeah, exactly. You get one shot at it. The lighting has to be perfect. The audio has to be perfect. And you have to be 100% on and with all your questions. Yeah. So I think I learned how to be, you know, on as soon, like as soon as I need it immediately. And of course, just being on the red carpet was a great experience to just work with all those amazing people, um, you know, at the top of their field. I think I was learning from the best. Yeah. So I did learn a lot about, you know, my career, how to have that work and life balance. You know, a lot of the times also what, what I've noticed is that the celebrities themselves, they're very, you know, balanced and, and they, you know, even though they do get a bad rap, you know, sometimes in the media, but I would say that just talking to them, they're like very, you know, down to earth, like most of them, I'll say 90%, mm -hmm. uh, very down to earth and just, uh, very conscious and conscientious of this need of having downtime and feeding your soul and mm. taking the time for self-care. I think because they've been on the spotlight for so long, they know that they need to take care of themselves yes. so they can keep it up, you know? Of course. So that was like a big, it was a big thing for me too. When I started talking to them more in depth, and asking those questions, like, how do you stay sane, you know, in this crazy world or this, um, you know, red carpet world, the glamour and fame yeah. and all of that. And, that, you know, I'm sure it can drive someone a little bit crazy. <laughs> Just being on the red carpet, you know, is uh, stressful sometimes. So can you imagine it, like being in the spotlight 100% of the time? So yeah, and you, and you have to be at your base all the time. Like, there's no room for complacency or for error really exactly yeah because it's like every day you know is like being on the spotlight every day is like being on the red carpet basically mm. so I think you just have to become a better version of yourself you know we talk a lot about that just be your best self but honestly when you are on the spotlight and I think that that would be you know the biggest thing that I learned that you have to be the the best version of yourself it's not just Oh, I have to look like I'm the best version of myself or I have to look nice or I have to seem like a good person. You know, you actually have to transform into a better person that you can inspire others. And, and I think that is the, you know, the biggest artist that, that they're really aware of that, that power that they have to inspire other people and impact other people, you know, like Oprah, mm. um, you know, that you can use like all your impact and all your, your uh, leverage, your, you know, fame or your exposure towards, you know, impacting people in a, in a, in a good way that you can make people's lives better. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's, you know, that's the best thing that, that can come out of it. And the smartest people and the, you know, the best uh, artists and actors and TV hosts and on-camera personalities, I think they're very aware of that. And yes. that's basically, you know, who I'm, uh, aspiring to be and who inspires me too that it's not just about being on the spotlight but really what can you do once you are on the spotlight you know for sure so I want to talk to you about uh, your holistic coaching you did touch on this earlier can you please share with us what makes you different in terms of your approach and have you got some examples of results that you have achieved with some of your clients yeah so thank you for asking about that um so yeah that's something that I started uh, noticing, you know, that is a need uh, for, especially for women, mm. the need for self-care. Mm. Um, and that's where I would say that I stand out with, you know, Feed Your Soul and the Feed Your Soul Challenge, because a lot of the times we're, you know, like we just talked about that, like being your best self. Like, I feel like women especially have this pressure of, oh, I always have to look my best. I have to be my best. Mm. And 
and not just and but i'm talking about being your best on the inside when i say yeah, be sure. your best I, I don't mean like always wear makeup you know not the, that you can wear makeup if you want to but uh just like not taking away that pressure uh from women and to just allow them to be themselves and mm. accept them for who they are and mm. just like realize that it's really about taking care of yourself accepting yourself and taking the time for self-care i think a lot of people are realizing that now more than ever they really need to take care of your mental health your wellness and your well-being you know that has to be your top priority yes. so feeding your soul has to be your number one on your list absolutely so when you are working uh, you know I'm, i'm sort of flipping between the two but when you are working on premieres and covering some of the biggest stars in the world how do you mentally prepare yourself for these types of events how do i mentally prepare myself i don't think you can fully mentally prepare yourself to be really honest yeah uh i did my best you know but that's how i created feed your soul too but you know as i'm preparing let's say for like a, a film premiere or a red carpet event Mm. Well, first of all, like I would uh research, you know, the well the main, you know, star or celebrity that I'll be interviewing, then create questions about that and then also research uh, you know, about the movie uh mm. and their background, what they're working on, what is next for them, what, you know, what are they um preparing, what they have in the works because people always like to be asked on what's next or what they're working on as much as they like to be asked on what they have done that's one yeah. thing that i've noticed too cuz a lot of the times i would ask you know in the beginning i would ask them like about what they've done and they would always say oh i'd like to talk more about what i'm doing right now mm. so they're very aware of that so definitely like find out what they're you know what are they're interested in the moment what they're working on um in in that period of time and then um I also do some research on like the whole cast and the the directors the crew like how you know the history behind the film like the background so definitely research is very important um but once you've done the research it you really have to take your mind off of it yeah it's like studying for a test you know you have to you have to have the confidence that you know what you're doing and you've done your research mm. or even like knowing your lines you know in a play or in a movie you do all your research you memorize your lines but once is the time to deliver it you have to have the confidence in yourself that you know what you're doing and you you've done the research and you're ready and you're prepared and then just go for it because a lot of it is just standing up for for yourself and just like holding holding on you know to that moment and holding yourself together basically but hold your own is like a big thing you know you have to be able to hold your own on the red carpet so yeah, i'll say cool. that's like the biggest thing and also like if if needed in case you have to know like you know bs your way out of any situation so yeah. <laughs> yeah, like oh. for like what oh, is like part of my french but it's true like you yeah. have to like you know you have to be there once you're alive it's like being on a you know live theater because every time that you're you know you're on camera you're shooting like a live interview basically it you know shoot it's like shoot to live so there is like i said there is no take two so you're all like live on camera mm. so whatever happened you have to be able to improvise yeah. so you know that's where my acting background came in and my improv background my stand up comedy background because you know you can always laugh it off make a joke make people feel comfortable it doesn't have to be perfect um and just go along with it you know embrace it and go along with it so yeah, that's a big sure. thing like don't know that you don't have to be perfect and no one's perfect so of course it's never going to be perfect just be be present keep going and go along with it whatever happens yeah never absolutely. stop <laughs> keep <So>, going <laughs> what what would you say some of your biggest career highlights have been Ooh, the biggest career highlights. I would say okay, the first one that comes to my mind is covering the Tony Awards. Wow. That okay. was a big it was a big uh announcement and it was like a huge shift for me when I I really felt like, all right, I'm a professional. Like I'm really doing this. <laughs> you know, I made it. 
uncovering the Tony Awards. Um, and then, you know, the Academy Awards. I also did the Academy Awards ceremony for, yeah. the, for the East Coast ceremony. So that was a big deal. Um, and I've been to the West Coast ceremony too, um, you know, the press room and everything, the winner's room. Um, there was one specific moment when Helen Mirren uh, won the Tony Awards and I was in the winner's room. I just, it was one of those moments I just looked around and I was like, wow, this yeah. is my life. This is amazing. I'm in the winner's room at the Tony Awards with Helen Mirren, wow. like having champagne. You know what I mean? Amazing. Like <laughs> You just have like those moments that, that's what I'm talking about. You have to have those moments that you stop and you look around Mm. and you're just like wow this is amazing this is my life this is great you know you have to appreciate it absolutely so i would say that is like a highlight uh obviously you know any film premiere that i cover like it's it's different and you know oh speaking with steven spielberg i would say that is also a big highlight for me because you know i've looked up to him as a director for so long you know i wanted to do entertainment because i watched saving private ryan i mean i wanted to you know work in the hollywood film industry and work with filmmakers and celebrities and come to hollywood and new york and you know all of that i think all from not only from steven spielberg but he's definitely a huge influence on my generation and i think a lot of, of generations of filmmakers and actors and everyone in the entertainment industry so just speaking with him and making it personal you know yeah. because when I talk to him it's really about making that personal connection with anyone no matter who they are if they're Steven Spielberg or you know your neighbor or someone across the street it's just like about having that human connection with another person yes yeah, so and cool. Yeah, I always wanted to get something. Every time I interviewed somebody, I always wanted to get something uh, out of them that no one had ever asked them yes. and that, that I never had uh, heard them talk about before. And one of the things that stands out for me with Steven Spielberg was when I asked him about his kids and he said that his kids and bedtime stories are what inspires him to create the best scripts. Wow, that's amazing. And, and that to me, like, you know, those moments to me are magical. That's what, you know, stands out to me and like makes me keep going because it's just, that's what makes it worth it. Absolutely. So that leads me to the next question. COVID-19 has turned our world upside down and inside out. So how has this impacted you and how have you had to adapt? And then within leading into that is obviously the entertainment industry has been dramatically impacted during this time as well. So how do you believe the industry will be moving forward over the next couple of years? And do you believe it will recover? Well, I feel like nothing will ever be the same. Yeah, for to sure. To be really honest. I don't think it can ever be, you know, the same thing that it was before because it's just, uh, it's a different world, you know, that we're living in right now. Yeah. So... It, every time someone says, oh, I wait, I'm going to wait until things go back to normal. Yeah, that's no but, such thing. <laughs> there is no such thing. Like the world is in constant motion. It's dynamic. The universe is dynamic. It's been like that since, you know, Earth was created, since the Big Bang, since the dinosaurs, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, every time someone says that to me, I always like, it makes me think of the dinosaurs. Like, well, I bet the dinosaurs were thinking the same thing, you know, before yeah. they were extinct uh i feel like it's all about adaptation like, like you said it's about evolution you know adaptation yeah. every time every time there's a big event around the world especially this you know we haven't had a world war three so this is kind of like our world war three right now mm -hmm. but we're fighting it you know just about looking inward and we're fighting with ourselves because it's basically about looking inward and changing who you are changing yourself and adapting yeah um, so sometimes those are the hardest battles because you can't blame it on anyone else. No. <laughs> you have to adapt yourself and, and just really uh, pivot, you know, change it into something else or reinvent yourself. And it has definitely affected my life like directly uh, because I was, you know, on a cruise ship when 
I found out about the shutdown, yeah. the lockdown, and cruises were banned. So we actually saw on Twitter that cruises were banned. That was the first thing we, we heard, you know, from Trump. Trump tweeted that uh, there was like a federal shutdown for all the cruises in mm. the U.S. Mm. And and basically, I was on a cruise, like <laughs> as the shutdown happened. So it completely changed overnight. My whole life changed overnight. You know, the cruises were canceled. Um, you know, I stopped working. I was on a cruise ship for 30 days on lockdown because we had to be on quarantine. We had no idea how to get off the ship because of all the regulations and because of, uh, you know, if um, even like the cruise line itself, like what they would allow us to do and what would be decided. And so it took us. 30 days to be able to get off the ship and I couldn't even take a commercial flight. So I knew I couldn't go to Brazil because of all the border regulations. I couldn't take a commercial flight and I had my car, thankfully, in the mm. port. So basically the only thing I could do is drive. And I drove from Miami to New York. Wow. Uh, yeah, to go on the, the apartment that I had before the before I was on the ship. That's where I stayed before I went on the ship. So thankfully I did have a place to stay and I had friends there, you know, who welcomed me and I'm very grateful for that. So I know how lucky I was okay. to have a place to go uh, and be on quarantine and, you know, get off the ship. But I definitely did have to go through this whole journey of getting to New York, you know, in the uh -huh. middle of a pandemic. And then I stayed there for six months. And then now I just did an even longer drive that I never thought I would be able to do it on my own. But there's another, I've been crossing a lot of uh, bucket list items, I feel like, this year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I did a whole cross-country trip on my own from New York to Las Vegas. And I just relocated to Las Vegas. Wow. So my whole life completely shifted. <laughs> there's yeah, nothing that is the same since the beginning of the lockdown. For sure. Yeah. And now, I mean, career wise, and then also now, you know, I've been doing more like work from home, media consulting, the holistic coaching, so I can help other women, uh, the feed your soul challenge. That is something that also came out of the lockdown. Okay. I just finished writing a book that I wrote about uh, all my experience in the lockdown as well. And it's called feed your soul now, less call to your dream life. Yes. So right. all these things, you know, and I'm launching my website this year. So it's just a lot of changes, a lot of uh, things that I had to change in, in myself and my, my how I approach my career to make it work. Because Absolutely. like, it's basically like burn the boats, right? The, like people use that expression, burn the boats, like yes. uh, metaphor. But in my case, it was literally, no, literally burn the boats. Like the boats are shut down. <laughs> we have yeah, to get yeah. off the boat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there was like no looking back, no, nothing to go back to because it doesn't exist anymore. So mm -hmm. it's basically, okay, what's next? Keep moving forward and, you know, heading west. And, and now everything that I'm doing has been online and, you know, doing partnerships to um, start media consulting and public speaking. Uh, doing the challenge and the holistic coaching, um, like you said. So everything has been different, but, you know, I believe in um, the universe and I believe that things are happening as, you know, they should be uh, as far as like, so we can learn things that we need to learn. And it has been a very challenging year. I'm not going to, not going to lie. Like it's been a very challenging year, yeah. but also it's been a year that I grew so much as a person, you know, just looking back now, it's, I can't believe it's December already, but I just feel like I grew so much as a person. I had, I was forced to look at things I didn't want to look at, like confronting myself, like my fears, my, you know, my limits and really expanding into, you know, being a, a better and higher version of myself and realizing, okay, these are all these possibilities here for you go for it. You know, all these things that I was putting off that, you know, I had thought about it before, but I didn't go for it. Mm. And then now it was basically like getting a little push from the universe. Like, there you go, go. Now it's your only option. You have to do yes. it. Go do it. 
I think it was not good for a lot of people. For a lot of people. <laughs> exactly. It's like so, no, there is no other option now. Like you uh, have, you ha- you're gonna have to work from home, and that's what you're gonna do. Exactly. exactly. So, what are the three key pieces of advice you would give to other entrepreneurs who are looking to pursue a career in your industry? And what would your advice be? And what legacy would you like to leave? I would say just just do it. Not to steal Nike's uh, slogan or <laughs> motto, but yeah. that it's so true. Like in in this industry, like I hear so many people talk about of uh, things that they want to do. And, you know, in the meantime, I've done it already. Like, and I went around the planet Earth like three times, you know, okay. like literally. Like, I'm just like, just do it, you know, stop yeah. talking about it. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's so many people. And, I, you know, sometimes even, I'm including myself too. Like, sometimes, like, I, you know, I'll catch myself like saying something like, oh, I want to do this. And then, it's like, you know what, just put it on your goal list, write yeah. it down and get it done. Like, yeah. stop talking about it. Like, sometimes I'll tell myself, like, you're not allowed to talk about this to anybody else until you finish it. Yeah. Like, you're not allowed, you're not allowed to say, I want to do something. You're allowed to tell people I've done it. Yeah. I did it. Or yeah. look, I've, I just finished. I launched it. You know, yeah. here it is. Here's the work. Because I feel like so many people, especially in entertainment, they focus so much on getting the job. Like, oh, I want to get the job. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do a podcast, right? I want to do a website. I want to write a book. And it's like, well, just go and do it. You know, they don't focus on the doing of it. And then nothing gets done. So they've been talking about what they want to do, you know, for 10 years. But they could have done it already. And then they can market it, you know. I think it was uh, James Cameron who said, uh, I never met him, by the way, but I just like I saw <laughs> one of his interviews, but he was talking about um, how, you know, so uh, like so many people, they say, oh, I want to direct. And he said, well, just go and direct. You know, it's so easy nowadays. I mean, if you have a phone, you can direct a movie, right? Yeah, for sure. That's that, Yeah. And then you can be a TV host. You can have a channel on YouTube, like just do it. Like, yeah. okay, you, you, it's not going to be the best thing ever, but perfectionist, perfectionism like kills so many dreams, you know, because you just wanted to be perfect and then you don't do anything and it just like makes you get stuck and not, not move forward. So I feel like just, when you start doing it, you're going to get better at it. So what James Cameron said is that if you just do something, you know, if you just direct any movie, uh, like even if it's with your family in your kitchen or your cousin, whatever it is that you do, I'm paraphrasing. I know this is not his exact quote, but you can call yourself a director. Yeah. Uh, and from then on, you're just negotiating, you know, your rate and the location. Huh. So I thought that was genius. It's like, it's so true. Like start from your living room, you know, mm-hmm. shoot a movie in your living room. Like start a show. And like nowadays, everything is on Zoom. It's virtual. Yeah. It's giving you so many opportunities for people to get out there, get, get their ideas out there and, you know, just put it out there. And then from then on, you're going to get more experience. You're going to get feedback. You can only get better, you know. Um, and it goes back to also uh, just to come back to like a personal story uh something that someone told me when i was first starting out as an actress in in la Mm. and you know everyone says well if you're an actor if you're a tv host you have to have a reel and you know i asked i think it was a casting director well how can i have a good reel because you know i want to get more experience before i have a reel like get you know better or more experience Mm. or be featured in you know more shows or before I, i put it on my reel And what can I do to have a good reel? And I thought it was the best answer that she told me was, well, if you want a really good reel, get a bad one first. Yeah. And I I thought that was so genius that it's like, oh, great. So I just went and I got a a bad reel that I was like, okay, I know this reel is not going to be great, but at least I have a reel and I can say I'm an actor. I have a reel. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So I would say like that is my advice to anyone who wants to start in the industry is get a bad reel. Like get a bad reel first. Like it doesn't matter if it's like really bad, if it doesn't look great, just get a bad reel and then build up from there. It's going to, I promise you, it's going to get better every year. 
if you have a bad reel, it will get better every year until you have a really good one. <laughs> yes, I promise you that. So what legacy would you like to leave? Oh, what legacy? Well, That's like a big question. <laughs> I would really like, um, right now in f- writing this book, like it just made me look at um, how I can impact other people's lives. So I feel like the biggest lesson is really how many people have you been able to impact and help others and how can you serve them? So I feel like really that is the biggest legacy and what I'm working towards. If I could just say, you know, that I impacted other people's lives and changed their lives for the better, I think that will be a win. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Julia, for joining us today. And if people would like to connect with you, what are the best platforms to do so? Oh, great. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Karen. This has been great. I love sharing all these stories and I'd love to talk to um, to you more and to anyone who's uh, listening to the podcast right now and watching this. Uh, my Instagram is Julia Milene Rio. Uh, Milim, M-E-L-I-M, and Rio, just like get Rio, you know, (laughs) R-E-A-M. So Julia Milim Rio. uh, And that's my Facebook page as well, uh, Julia Milim Rio. And I created that because it's something that it can work in Portuguese and English because it's the same word. We just say differently. It's real in Portuguese and real in in English. (laughs) So it works. Yeah. or real, which is like how it would be the Portuguese pronunciation. But anyways, if you're watching, in, in, I'll say it in Portuguese now, it's Julia Melin Real. Okay. That's Portuguese. Yeah. And Julia Melin Rio English. So Amazing. you can find me. And my website that I'm launching, so I'll be la- launching it this year. Uh, I'm trying not to like make too many promises, but that is something I have to do before the year is over. So I have the next 30 days. <laughs> I have <Yes>. December. <laughs> um, so it's juliemeline.com. So you can look me up there and you can always Google me to find out more of what I'm up to and you know what I'm working on. Um, but yeah, my website will be coming up soon, juliemeline.com. And check out this podcast. I also want to do more podcasts. So that's something new for me and more podcasting and blogging ahead. Yes. My goal will be before the end of the year. (laughs) Amazing. Well, thank you so much. And hopefully we can have you back in the future to see where you are in your journey. But, uh, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Karen. Thank you, Talent Finders. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And I love uh, talking more with you. And thank you for having me. Thank you.